Okay, hi, welcome to the Maureen Center for Clay. We're standing here inside of a 1926 Seaboard Freight Depot. The building itself is almost 100 years old. It was built in, finished in 1926, all solid brick and steel, and it's really a pretty incredible space. It wasn't a passenger station, even though folks walk in all the time and tell me that they rode the train from here. It was a freight depot that's stuff coming in and out. So as we wander through the building, you'll notice all sorts of writing written on the brick walls with grease pencil. Some of them are easy to translate, others are a little bit more difficult. But the building itself is, is very interesting. Really careful not to hide or camouflage any of the original writing. We have a resident, an artist in residency program. We have six, six young people from around the country. They've either just recently graduated from college and in some cases already gotten their postgraduate degree and are just en route to starting their own careers but it's really a wonderful program that the residency program helps the, keep the entire studio reinvigorated with the, uh, the addition of four to six new people every year. It's just amazing how much it changes the energy and just a greater sense of community and just more knowledge with people from around the world. Our shows change in here every month to two months. So the very front of our building up here was the old purser's office. This green panel that you see here was originally a fold-up doorway. The, the railroad tracks ran along the entire south side of the building. As we come forward, the artists and residents are in this area. It's our six young people from around the country to come and to work in the studio and just to really, we have so many different kilns and things, it gives them an opportunity to really explore and figure out what it is that they want to work on or possibly where they want to end up. Part of our member studio, and it it's really gives you a great example. Folks each have their own shelving unit. They use them as they see fit for their wares. But you can see the beginning of the real diversity of the works. Some of our members are, are <laughs> have been in studios around the world. We have six different folks that moved to St. Petersburg because of this facility so that they could have access to all of our kilns and the amazing community that we've created here. We have private studios on this side and then this is all work that is for sale. We'd love to have you buy some of it. Um, this is Jan Richardson. She's 54 years into clay working. Um, her work is just absolutely gorgeous. She started making these Victorian houses that she at one time had her own pottery and she, she had 60 people working for her making elements for those. Don Williams, one of our teachers, Don and in season when he's really busy, throws 750 pounds of clay per week. A coffee cup is one of the most difficult things we do. It's a deeply personal object and you don't think about that. When you pick up your favorite cup in the morning, we all just about have one, it's all because of the way you hold it. Elle is an architectural ceramist. She does walls, swimming pools, you name it right now. She just finished, I think, her fifth or sixth wall for Clearwater Airport doing beautiful tile projects. Plates, platters, bowls, so many wonderful things that you can create. Janet lives in Texas part of the time and then comes and joins us here as often as she can if we have a workshop. This is another, again, one of our wonderful teachers. This is uh, Guillermo Nunes. Guillermo created these seven deadly sins. The wood that he used to, for the backdrop on them is actually from Pier 60. When the Pier 60 blew down in one of the storms, he actually saved a board and then over the years saved it and saved it till he came up with the perfect use for it. The diversity here is amazing and there's rarely a day that goes by that somebody has not unloaded a kiln, which is really wonderful. Alicia Diem, what do I say about Alicia? Alicia surprises us just about every day. She's doing something new and different. Traditional in pottery studios to have your guest artist sign the wall because it kind of tells your history. Yeah, this is the glaze room, cone six on this side, which is a stoneware temperature, high fire on this side for cone 10. There's so many different things and, and, and things to learn within the world of clay. But what's really fascinating, if you look at this, each of these lines, this is the same clay in first the gas kiln at the top and the wood kiln in the middle. 
and then in the soda kill at the bottom end. So the diversity in students often in the beginning, it's really complex. The archways, it's 18 inch thick brick. The black door that you can see behind the shelving units um, is an old fire door that had a little copper wire at the top. And if the copper wire got hot, it triggered it, it would slide shut. The wall back here says no web. Any of you St. Petersburgers will recognize that. That was Web City, that apparently Web City would have an awful lot of stuff come in off the railroad tracks. We have 12 electric kilns. Most studios, uh, if, as a studio potter, you probably have one, maybe two. Even most college programs and stuff don't have this many kilns. This is the new state of the art. This is a new scut kiln. We run classes seven days a week. Just about anything you might want to learn about the, the world of art in, clay, in the clay material. It's really pretty amazing because everything from a very simple slump plate, which would take just minutes to learn how to do, can be painted and finished, to pretty complex thrown forms. We are the first people in the Warehouse Arts District, first organization to move down here. Truly, is a, it's been an amazing transformation watching, watching it all grow. Warehouse Arts District, when we first started it, we had no idea really. We had a, a dream, a vision, but boy, we really didn't know how well it would really take off. And the railroad was the primary employer in the south, part, south side of St. Petersburg. And what's really interesting about that is they, uh, there are so many warehouses down here for just that reason, because this is where the freight line came through all of it. This warehouse is a lot of them built by Doc Webb to supply Webb City. There are really no mistakes in the beginning, because anything you can see in your brain, we can help pull out of you, and that's, it's really important.